everybody, this is Foursquare Michael Farm, and I'm in the dye pot today. Okay, so here are my locks. Oh, I think these are teas water. They could be mohair. Uh, I kind of forget. I've checked the original bag. So anyway, it's I put the water in and soaked the fiber just a bit. Got it kind of wet. Then what I did is I poured the dye solution really thick, really heavy, on one side. And I crammed the locks in, and before the dye solution could completely move around the pot, I crammed these guys in over here. So basically what I did is I, I created a section in the pot. And what it's going to do is it's going to keep this side from dyeing as dark as these guys right here. And sometimes I've even jammed stuff in there like that and put two different dye colors on both sides. But a lot of times when I'm dyeing uh, tonal, I guess it's, I think tonal is the word I'm looking for, tonal yarns where it's one color in different different um, strengths. The word is escaping me now. Obviously, I had too much to eat for Christmas yesterday. But at any rate, when I'm dyeing for the different gradations, a lot of times it's easier to do it this way. Or if I have a, like I said, I love the jacquard periwinkle that breaks. And I'll do some periwinkle on the second side because I'm going to combine those two. And when I do something that breaks, just to sprinkle different amounts of dye solution in different sides and allow the dye to do its natural thing. And it, it makes for really cool effects. I also have a few little pieces here that are just peeking out. Uh, they're not going to take up any dye and maybe as I get towards the end as most of the take up is complete I will push them down so they can absorb just the tiniest bit of the dye and it's really important here not to stir this and basically not to pour any more water or anything else over it because if you pour more water then of course it's going to flow right out it's going to allow that dye to travel and that of course negates the entire process so I'll be back in a little while after this is all done, I'm going to turn it up to high. And I don't actually know how hot this crock pot gets. As soon as I find my uh, laser thermometer and I can uh, gauge it, I'll find out for you. But I'd say I've never seen this pot boil. So I think at the most probably 180 degrees Fahrenheit is as hot as it gets. But I'm just going to leave it on there until the, the dye exhaust. Whew, probably... I don't know, maybe an hour. I don't know. I just one of the things I love about crock pots and German shepherds who shake tables. Gee, one of the things I love about crock pots is I can just kind of put it in and walk away. Though I've left the pot on overnight and kind of burned my fiber, so don't do that. But I do like that I can put it in and walk away from it. Here, this out of the dye pot in broad daylight. And uh, let me put this piece of paper underneath it to get a better idea. The dark spots, light spots. And you know what? It's not as light as I wanted it to be because I can't remember what I... Oh, you know what happened was the dye wasn't exhausting the way I wanted it to. And you know what? A lot of times red dyes don't. So I added more vinegar to the pot. And when I did that, I kind of flowed it over. And I got more dye in places where I didn't quite want it initially. So it is a little darker in some places than it needs to be. But because I didn't pull the locks apart, and I do pull them apart, I'm going to find all these kind of white highlights. And so look at this. There's a spot where it's like almost like purple. Yeah, there we go. That shows up much better. So yes, there'll be some really nice variation. When I pull that apart, it'll lighten it up a bit. And of course, I just have some, some more locks, so I can always add uh, the lighter. But at least I've got three different variations. And it doesn't show up this well on the camera. Uh, the camera makes it a little more pink than it should be, but this is actually much more cherry red, this spot right here. And the spot behind it is more pink. You can't really tell but you can see in the camera through the, well, I can see through the viewfinder that there's a contrast. You can see that this is obviously darker and this is a little lighter. 
but they're actually different colors. This is a lot more pale. And uh, the white parts show up really nicely, really nicely highlighted. I really like that spot right there. That is gorgeous. When I tease them apart, I'll try to leave that in there. And then the chunks that are basically purple. And like I said, this is all the same dye. It's all the same red. So I, that's just the way it broke and the color changed in it. Now, this back here is the the purple and it's a totally different dye pot. After I took the cherry red out, I put this in. Oh boy, and I am just loving that. And I dyed it really dark, but there's some splotches, so there'll be a variation in that too. And even still, you can see the variation between this right here. This is almost like a lavender over here, and then a, a true purple over here, and then the, a darker purple. And there's a darker purple towards the bottom that is almost black. I love that right there. And just for a little added, because the dye totally exhausted in this one, um, I threw in a Angora Chromo Blend, I think it was, a friend gave to me, since she knows how much I love Angora, of course. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but I spun it up, and here it is. That's gonna be absolutely beautiful. That's what's in my dye pot. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to um, spin this up prior to the next video. Or, I don't know, this might even just go in my Etsy store. It depends on how I feel. So, I'm going to stop the video here. Uh, yeah, I'll probably just stop it and upload it. Because, you know, a lot of times I start the videos. And then, the, since projects take a long time, depending on what project I'm doing and how my rotation is going... Sometimes I don't even post the videos because it's been, you know, two months down the road when I did the project. Uh, and I just like to delete the video. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and post this video. And if I actually wind up using this myself in a particular skein, then I'll just link back to this video. Because it's just a basic video of me and my crock pot and dyeing some yarn. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.